Welcome to the June edition of According to Pete. Thanks for everybody who came out to Maker Fair. It was a really good time. Uh, thanks for everybody who stopped by and stopped me and said, Hey Pete, shake your hand, man. You great videos and stuff. Uh, especially the guy when I asked him, how do you like the videos? You said, all right, you, you're awesome. You are my hero, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Saw a bunch of our uh, cohorts in this uh, industrial space, which is to say, uh, oh God, what do we call it? Uh, the, the make thing, the, the, the uh, DIY electronics thing. In fact, worth a note is uh, Lamour Freed gave me this t-shirt. And worth a mention, she was not there handing out t-shirts to people, right? She, she talked to me and said, hey, you send you this t-shirt. She shipped it to me. So that was really, really cool. She went that extra mile and I love this t-shirt. Thank you, Lamour. It's very nice. If you came by the booth, you probably saw one of our guys, not me, but one of our guys, a few of our guys with these buttons about yay big that Christopher T. Palmer made that have my little According to Pete logo on them. They're awful. Thanks, Chris. Thanks a ton, buddy. But shout out for you because you did that unsolicited. That was really awesome. Everybody's doing well. Business is good. Everybody's happy. It's a cool community that we're a part of, don't you think? Don't you think? So anyway, let's talk about the video today. Greg here, our, our wonderful videographer, has been hassling me saying people want more Pete. They want more according to Pete. And I kind of roll mine and go, no, dude, you're out of your mind. Um, but he's convinced me to try this out. This is gonna be the first of a two-parter. And then in two weeks time, we're gonna run the second part of this. This is an experiment to see uh, how, how this goes. And I'll talk more about it in the next episode. But uh, for now, we're gonna do a short one this week and two weeks later, we're gonna have another one. But for now, let's talk about the Ant Project, which is, yes, the longest project in the history of humankind. When last we left off, this was not mounted here. It was a, a, a device <laughs> in and of itself, which had not been hacked apart. A couple of weeks ago, I called up Greg and said, dude, you gotta come to my office. I got this thing all bashed up and you gotta check it out. And uh, he filmed the uh, carnage that is that MP3 player's demise. So here is that video now. This is the MP3 player that I'm going to integrate integrate into my amp project. Now, just a little lesson on, on, on taking stuff apart, right? I started off uh, with a screwdriver thinking, oh, I'm gonna be all proper about this. And I actually managed to remove three screws, but it took me a bunch of time just to get that far. And the thing didn't come apart any better than it would have uh, otherwise. So as you can see, <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of parts laid out here. And ultimately the tools that I use to pull it apart this far or this, you see that, see that, that, yeah. I love this thing. It melts through junk like crazy. This came apart really quick. Uh, and this, I actually used the knife to pull off these escutcheons and uh, found not a single screw underneath the escutcheon. So that was really useless. In order to integrate this thing, I need access to the, 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 the navigation button to go uh, track forward and track back. Uh, there's a button up here. There's actually three buttons up here that you can't see, and I'm not gonna roll this over because Greg will go, where'd you move it, man? Um, but there's one button right up here that is actually um, pause and power on off. So I need access to that one too. Uh, and then the power. So this is my positive lead there, and then there's a negative lead down here. And this thing runs on a single AA battery that goes in here. What you can't see here is this thing is basically uh, a cube, well not a cube, it's sort of a rectangle. I'll roll it that much so you can see. Now, it's got a circuit board on this side that's got the uh, memory right there and the buttons, and it's got a circuit board on this side, and it's all kind of locked up on top of this plastic uh, frame that holds the battery. I'm not gonna take it off of that because if I do, then these two boards that are at right angles to each other are probably going to unmate and then I'm gonna have a lot more trouble than I want. Now, the button up here that you can't see is really easy. Uh, it's uh, two leads, I can, I can close that contact fairly easily, I think. Um, I don't know yet if one of these two, it's, it's, it's a single pull, single throw, momentary switch, right? Uh, one, of the, one of the two leads that go to this thing could be ground, it could be high. I think it's ground. It's probably ground through a 10K. Why do I think that? 
Well, because of what I found on this one. This one has uh, five functions. You can push it that way for track back. You can push it uh, this way for track advance. Then it has volume up and volume down. And then you press it and you get like a directory thing, okay? So in order to figure this thing out, I've soldered leads onto the tabs on the switch. Um, and the way you go about this, right, you wanna, like, like when, 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 uh, when they try to do control this way, they're, they're, the switch is going to be wired in some fashion to a microcontroller, virtually guaranteed. Um, and so what I do is I check all of the leads that are attached to this thing to see if one of them goes to ground first, right? Because if, if it's attached to a microcontroller, they're either going to try to pull a line high to positive voltage, or they're going to try to pull it low to ground. So the first thing I do is check all the leads to see if any of them is ground. Turns out none of them are ground. However, this one is 10K to ground, and it's always 10K to ground no matter what I do on the switch. So that's the giveaway. Everything else really ought to be attached to that one in some fashion through a switch movement. And of course, it is. Well, not of course, it happens that it is. Uh, and I've marked on my little post-it here, okay, this one's 10K to ground. So what I do is I attach this to my uh, voltmeter, <laughs> this guy, which I won't keep in the screen. I attach that guy to one lead on my voltmeter, or my ohm meter rather, uh, and then I sequentially go around, I attach the other lead to this one, and I go, okay, what, what does this do? Ah, okay, that one does volume up. So now I know what I have to do to connect to volume up. Uh, this one, when you uh, uh, give it track advance, this one pulls to ground. It, it makes the contact between these two leads, effectively taking this thing to ground through a 10K resistor. Okay, and same thing for the, like, uh, this one does the push button down, this one does volume down, this one does track back. Ah, perfect. Okay, so when I wire this up to my Pro Mega, I'm going to attach it to a pin on the Pro Mega through a 10K, and what I will do is I will switch, if I don't want to have contact, I just make it a high Z, right? Turn the, turn the line into an input so it has no effect. If I want to actuate the switch, I just take this lead on such and such pin through a 10K and I pull that line down. And that will give me control. So now uh, I'm gonna show you a, a little bit of a, a close picture of what's going on here. And we'll talk about it as we go. Cool? Cool. First order of business after busting this thing out is to mount to the board. And as you can see, I didn't do anything at all fancy. This is uh, four layers of double sticky tape or foamy tape, like servo tape or something. Uh, and it's just, you know, sooner or later it might dry out for the time, but for the time being, uh, it's, it's pretty solid. Um, now something else you have to consider is if you're gonna put anything onto this MP3 player, you need access to the USB port, which is right there. Now as this thing hangs on the wall, this thing sticks straight up in the air, which is stupid. Um, but if I had it turned this way so that the USB was on this side, the screen would be upside down. As it is, the screen is perpendicular to the horizontal, which is also stupid. Uh, you know what? Life needs a little stupid. There you go. Okay, so let's talk about powering this thing. Now, this MP3 player runs off of a single AA battery, right? 1.5 volts. It's possible that the whole thing, you know, all the logic, everything in there is one and a half volts. It's probable that there's a booster circuit in it and it runs on like three, three point three or something. Okay, not impossible, but there you go. I'm I'm betting it's running on a higher voltage. If I thought it could, if I thought there wasn't a booster in there, I would probably go. Oh, it'll probably run up to three point three volts, and I just grab the power right off the uh, the Arduino mega board. Um, but since it's a one and a half volt thing, and I got a hunch, I'm gonna set it up with a regulator. Um, and the regulator that I got, and this is just gonna be a quick sketch, I don't remember the, the uh, actual values, but I powered the regulator from uh, five volts, and you know, it's like an LM317, you got five volts in, that's my main supply line, uh, and it's got, there's a cap already in there on the input, and then you got the adjust line, ADJ, which I'm sure you can't read, and then you got your two resistors that set the voltage. And then you put a cap in here to make it smooth. That doesn't look like an arrow at all. It looks like a rock. 
well, it's not a rock. And then maybe you put one out here to smooth that out and you got 1.5 volts. Let's talk about a booster circuit for a second. I actually had two semesters of design work with these things a long time ago. Uh, I can't remember any of it. But what I do remember is that when you have a booster circuit or a buck circuit, weird things happen when V in approaches V out, okay? Um, and there are, there are parts that will switch over to like a linear mode or something so you can go over and under and just get continuous voltage out. But in the case of this MP3 player, um, it's never gonna, the input voltage is never gonna be higher than 1.5 volt, okay? And if it is indeed running on a booster up to three volts or what have you, then they're never expecting to have to reach that issue where V in and V out are that close, okay? So I don't want to put a higher voltage into that one and a half volt input because usually these wiggy things end up being that it doesn't work and usually doesn't work means it's drawing tons of current and I want it, I want that thing to work. So, so this is what I did. I avoided using uh, a higher voltage. I actually went to the trouble of setting this up um, and I'm glad I did because after uh, plugging it all in and uh, fooling around with the logic, right? Because I still have to set up all the switching and stuff for you know forward and backward and play pause. Um, but in checking that with a, with a voltmeter after the fact, uh, it is in fact running at three volts. The logic is running at three volts. So good thing I did this or it would have been ugly. Also worth a mention, now the, the LM317 here, this is what I had on hand, okay? It's an adjustable regulator. It'll adjust down this low. Um, it's not what I would call, uh, well, it's not efficient because it's a linear regulator. Um, but uh, yeah, worth a mention. Yeah, it's gonna drop, you know, one and a half, five minutes, one and a half is three and a half volts times whatever current that the MP3 player is drawing, not very much. I don't have to worry about power on this thing. It's a TO220 package. It'll never see a problem. It'll never be an issue. But one thing that is worth a mention is like uh, one of these two resistors is like 2.2K. The LM317 and LM1117, which we normally stock, um, it has like a minimum current draw before it'll stabilize and you almost never get enough current through that branch to make it stabilize. So on my circuit, I actually have another resistor to ground just to, boy, I'm having a problem with triangles. Um, it's like 150 ohms, so it'll draw like 10 milliamps or something. So I'm gonna stop there, right? Because we're doing another one in two weeks. Uh, next time we're gonna cover uh, all the switching stuff and right up to the state that it's in now. Keep the questions and comments coming in the comment section below, or you can email questions to feedback at sparkfun.com. That's it. With according to Pete in the subject line, it'll get on a spreadsheet, I'll have a look, and then I'll go, I don't know that. Until next time, thanks.